Amen. I just want to give you an admonition today before we look to God's word in just a moment. Um, because this is election week, I want to encourage you as your pastor. In fact, I want to strongly encourage you to, as Christians, to get out and vote this week. It's really important that you do that. I was reading an article in Newsweek a couple of weeks ago that said that um, they estimate that 32 million people who call themselves Christians plan to not vote this coming election cycle. And it, it grieved my heart to see that. And I, I understand, uh, you know, the people are uh, understandably confused about a lot of things going on in our world right now. But um, I hope that you're not one of those 32 million as your pastor. If there's one thing I could pray and hope for, it is that you're among those who will steward, steward your vote well and for God's glory, and that you do your best. You just do your best to try to be informed on the issues and that you do your best to uh, vote in alignment with God's word on the things that matter the most. And I just want to encourage you with that today. I, I honestly believe to the extent that this is true about these potential 32 million people who call themselves Christians not voting, I believe to the extent that that is true, it's actually an indictment upon the lukewarmness of those believers because um, it's, it's, a, it's a sacred responsibility we have. We're in a season where we're talking about influence, and it's really important as God's people that we steward our influence well. And what bothers me the most is that many of those 32 million non-voters who claim to be Christians will be the same 32 million that are the first to get on social media and complain about everything that's wrong in our country. And um, that's just a tragic, it's a tragic thing when people sit on the sidelines and do nothing and they just want to complain. Uh, that's just not what God intends. And it's tragic. It's tragic that people can uh, come to that place where they, you know, just can't be bothered to vote in a democratic republic that affords us as citizens the right to engage in a representative form of government that our forefathers actually gave their lives for. And uh, our country has been blessed by God because of uh, the values that this country was built upon. And while it's not perfect, there is no perfect country, there are no perfect people or leaders, uh, this country was founded on you know, a lot of very important and biblical values that um, we need to, as salt and light, in our culture contend for in our day. So I just want to encourage you, please pray for our nation. Please um, do your best to be informed on the issues. Some of you have brought your ballots and you can leave them here uh, in the deposit box. There's a ballot box here actually at the church. We'll make sure that those get turned in. Uh, but please engage by voting to the best of your ability, your values as Christians. How many of you know, we need good leaders on school boards in our city, we really do. We need good leaders in our city and the county government. Uh, we have a lot of things at stake in our nation right now, and certainly in the state of California right now, there's some important things going on. So this is a part of being a good steward, and I just hope that you will um, not set this one out not set this one out, okay? Hey, can, can we just pray together? Let's just bow our heads and just pray. Father, we thank you uh, for the privilege of living in this country. What a great blessing it is for all of us. And we just pray that none of us would take your blessing for granted, nor would we be discouraged or dismayed by a lot of what we see happening in our world, that we wouldn't be sidelined by all the uh, toxic rhetoric that we would just seek your face, read your word, let you lead us, God, by your spirit as we participate in this important part of our governance. And we pray for your will to be done. And we pray for all of our leaders. We pray for all of those. We're commanded in scripture to pray for those who lead us. And we will do that. No matter what outcomes there are, we will do that. We will pray, seek your face. And uh, so, Lord, we just pray over this week for our nation. Pray that you would bring healing to our nation. 
We pray, God, that you would work powerfully in our nation. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen and amen. Uh, This morning, as you might remember, that we started this year off uh, talking about taking ground. That was our theme when we kicked off 2024. And we talked primarily in the first month of 2024 about taking ground uh, as a, in a personal way. We really taught about what it looks like personally to take ground. This month, we're kind of moving toward uh, reconnecting with that theme because in the month of November, we want to really focus on taking ground as it relates to the body of Christ corporately as a church, being the people God's called us to be. As you know, the last season of our year is largely focused on being an influence for God in our world, being salt and light in a dark world. And um, so we're gonna take a couple of weeks and we're gonna really focus on, you know, that happening in our community. How can we be people who aren't just complainers, but we're problem solvers, we're people who roll up our sleeves and work hard, we're good citizens, we're people that uh, work with our leaders to bring transformation to our community, we're people that care about the hurting and broken and marginalized in our day. And we're Isaiah 58 people that are committed to seeing our community restored and people's lives transformed by the grace of God. And so uh, the next few weeks, we're gonna really focus on that today. We're talking primarily about taking ground in a local and national way uh, to serve. And we really believe that we find our place. We really, as we, as we serve our community, that we represent Christ and we get the opportunity by serving our community to also speak into the hearts and lives of people. At the end of the day, we need to see people's hearts change and their minds renewed. And um, so today we're gonna focus on that. And I've asked Pastor Carl and Jen to come and kick off this month for us. And uh, as you know, they lead our missions work and thrust from the church and City Serve, and we're just excited for what God is doing and excited for Carl and Jen to come share with us today as we really focus on this taking ground as we go into our community and our city and our nation, and then we'll be later on in this month talking about taking ground globally. So would you welcome a new, brand new grandparents just a week into it, and they're really liking it, by the way. And uh, come on, Carl and Jen, God bless you guys. We love you guys and appreciate you. It is very sad. Amen. Welcome to church this morning uh, in the summit, if you're online. Uh, The next two weeks, as pastor is saying, we're going to discuss mission, me and Jennifer, and we we're living in we're living in really uncertain times in many ways. Of course, as many of us uh, believe, as Dave is even sharing this morning, uh, it seems like the last days or birth pains or when we talk about all the things that happen. In CityServe, we've been living through from uh, Ukraine to the floods. In fact, Dave was just sharing with me as, as we were just getting up here that just in North Carolina, CityServe is responding. It's been equivalent to 100 Niagara Falls, the water. It's biblical proportions happening, and always we hear kind of on the news, a uh, 100-year storm, or it's never happened before. We're living in really uncertain times, including this week, as we as a nation uh, is wrestling with what the future looks like. But the next two weeks, we want to talk about what it looks like as God's people, because after whatever happens, He's still on the throne. Amen. God's people is still going to be able to take ground and do incredible things as we explore what that looks like. So we want to discuss that, and uh, we look forward to the next couple of weeks. You know, um, my wife, uh, Jennifer, she is in, uh, like Jeremy, they're wrestling with education, theology. She's fuller and studying mission theology. So as an evangelist, we have developed this funny dynamic, sharing the message, developing. It didn't used to be this way, but now we're wrestling more with Scripture. So this this will be a good two weeks. But the first morning, this morning, we're focusing on the neighborhood. 
we say in Canyon Hills, from the neighborhood to the nations. So when we talk about to the ends of the earth and unrich people and what it looks like here, we want to focus on what's happened and what happened right here. In fact, there's been incredible things happening the last just seven years since CityServe was born, and sometimes we don't pause enough to discuss that, but also what it means for you and me as families. What does it mean to you and me uh, to uh, take ground in our workplace where God has planted you, your family, and what does it look like in those opportunities? But um, in good sport, because we've been mentioning that uh, we just entered into the Grant Parenthood, Pastor Steve always share his pictures and everyone else. So and I get Pastor to Wendell I get to I get to share my picture this morning. <laughs> so this is actually he's here live. So. He's here in first Sunday in yes. church. So we're uh, we're excited first Sunday in church. So we're we're proud. We're excited. His name is Carl Levi Börje Josefsson. That's a lot of names, but in Swedish, <laughs> what it is? <laughs> what in Swedish Levi is is his name, but what it means is he's fourth generation prophetically missionary. Yes. And in just three months, they will be moving as full time missionaries to Thailand. Yeah. So. so we are so proud of them. It is yes. such a such a blessing here uh, this morning to have them here and look at Scripture. We are uh, going to look at uh, Daniel. In Daniel, when we're looking at, at the passage, and I want to read from Daniel um, chapter 11, verse 32, but in this passage, it was very much for Daniel on certain times, and he was struggling with it. It was on certain times, uh, like very much today. In that chapter, he receives vision, uh, and visions, uh, in turmoil, deception, and spiritual challenge. He, in the midst of this, uh, was able to hear from the Lord, and in fact, verse 32 is emerging in that uncertainty. So when we're looking in uncertain times and we're talking about uh, what it's going to look like through this week in our nation, but also around the world, because it's not, you know, we who've been part of CityServe, we've been in Ukraine, and many of us, when we were there the first day the war broke out, the feeling was that this is forces at play that is beyond one or two nations deciding we're going to have war. It, it, it was such, a, such a, a feeling of, you know, this is beyond this leaders that we hear about in the news. This is things that play that um, God is in the middle of too, or is at least allowing. But in the middle of that, uh, Daniel, in the middle of that uncertainty, he was able to hear from the Lord. And verse 32 is emerging in that context. And he's hearing from it, and this is what the scripture says. Daniel says, those who do wickedly against the covenant, uh, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God mm -hmm. shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Amen. 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 So as we look at this passage and we talk about it, we want to break it down here uh, this morning and discuss what that could mean for you and me in uncertain times. How do we, when we maybe wrestle with anxiety, we are trying to pray through what it looks like even responding as good citizens, but what does it mean as God's people in this time? And is there a verse or is there a word for you and me on how we can, in fact, not just shrink back as we say, because this is what I love with Canyon Hills. This is what we've been saying for years, and this is partially what I believe many times the Lord is using our church to do incredible exploits. And we're going to share some of the things that is happening, but also how you and me can live that, not just as a body, but also individually in our family. We do not drink back, we said, but we are people of faith that step into the uncertainty and let the Lord do incredible, incredible things. Amen. So what he says, the Lord is, the people who know their God shall be strong into great exploits. Knowing God what does that look like as we break that down? Yeah, I just want to talk a few minutes about what it means to know God. And you, we could do a whole series for a year on the concept of knowing God. But in terms of taking ground and not shrinking back, knowing that Daniel was living in a day and time, like Carl said, that was uncertain. It was um, very corrupt. Yet he was able to connect with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, with Yahweh in a way that he heard from God all throughout the seasons of living in the, one of the darkest moments of history. 
And I think that we can know, we can learn even from Daniel's words that what does it mean to know God? Because it's very different. Knowledge, we put a lot of emphasis and sometimes we even put a priority on knowledge and, and that's okay, but we can, and even in this day and time, there's a lot of influencers around and, and we, can, we, we want to know about them. This knowledge that is spoken of is much deeper and more significant, much more significant than knowing about. We can know about a lot of things. We can know about a lot of people. We can know about influencers. We can know about people that are famous, but it doesn't mean that we know them right? And so the word that, that Daniel speaks of is actually a Hebrew word that's called yada. And it goes way beyond intellectual knowledge. It implies that there's an intimate, experiential knowledge of God that affects the whole person. And so when, we, when, when Daniel, it says, it says and declares that we know God, it goes way beyond just knowing him and knowing information about him. Sometimes we can go into church and we go, man, we can just, just know more information about God. No, this is a knowledge that is in, in, um, grounded in the covenant that God made for us. It's a covenant that, is, that it, it cannot be broken. So when we come into a relationship Relationship with God and we know him, it's a covenantal relationship that is much more than just knowing information about him, but it's very personal and it's a relationship that causes an inside, like what Pastor talked about um, last week, there's an inward transformation that allows for an, a, a, an outward expression. And we know this, that Daniel he lived a life that was that expressed this understanding that God is a covenant keeping and a covenant making God and in his covenant of love for him he understood it and even the kings around him began to declare God is a covenant keeping God but it says in Daniel 4 that I pray to the Lord my God and confess Lord the great awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. That this covenant that, that Daniel talks about is also, it's a covenant of, uh, of the Old Testament, but the New Testament, through the death and the resurrection of Christ, we enter into a new covenant with him. A covenant that says like this, Jesus says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, and that the only true God and Jesus Christ whom have sent. So Daniel was talking about a covenant of that he made with his people that goes much more beyond a head knowledge. It's a, it's a knowledge that transforms us from the inside and our outside expression reveals our inward covenant keeping relationship with the Lord, the Amen. King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, yeah. the God, the Yahweh. Yeah. It's, and so I think that in this day and time, it's so important to understand and to get deeper into understanding what it means to be in covenant with God. Yeah. It's so important and go deeper into the knowledge of, that, of, of what that means. You see that when Daniel understood this and, and he was facing this time that was very dark, it says that not only that he prayed and he prayed and he was a man of prayer and fasting. He prayed three times a day and he opened up his window to allow everyone to see that I'm praying to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's because he had a relationship with God, a commitment to God, a transformation that took place in his life that said, I will pray and I will fast and I will give my life on the outside to worship God. Yeah. It's because of this knowledge of God that surpasses yeah. just an understanding it intellectually. It was something that inside re, um, caused a change. And so, and also Daniel, we know that he had a resolve in his life, right? Because he understood God and he knew God and he had a covenant with God and he understood that this covenant could not be broken. You know that when we go into a relationship with God, it's not an in and out. It's a covenant that you come into, an intimate covenant that you, you are invited into and you belong to him and he knows you and you know him. And I love the idea that when God knows us, he loves every part of knowing us. 
So it's this covenant relationship we know, but it's also Daniel, he had a resolve that he would not defile God or himself by living in that corrupt day and time, but because he had this relationship and understanding and knowledge of God, he said, I will, I will make a stance and I, he, I will not defile myself to corruption at that time. That when we know God, at that extent of this yada knowing God, that the, what the Hebrew is talking about, this covenant knowing God, when we understand him in that way, we will, people, we will be people that will say, make a stance and say, I will not defile God. I will not defile myself and I will make a stance and I will serve him and I will be people that will pray and I will be a person that seeks him and I'll be a person that goes after God because it's a knowledge way beyond just head knowledge. It's a heart knowledge. It's knowing it's coming into a covenant relationship with him as marriage or an intimate relationship with God. So I think that in this day and time and knowing God, we have to go deeper in understanding in a, that it goes way beyond head knowledge. Yep. It transforms our life to go into covenant with God. Amen, 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 that's good. It is a source, it becomes a source of strength, yeah. right? He was able to stand up. It even up, in says fact, that he, that he says that the people will know God, and they shall be strong. That's right. Yep. In fact, even what happened is it became the influence of mm -hmm. the leaders of its time. Yeah. Empire, kingdom. You become the leader of, influencer of, uh, real things. So knowing God causes us uh, to also start knowing God's mission make him known. You know, so we talk about knowing God. It's so in the verse, the people that know their God, they will do great exploits. But what, what happens is when we start knowing him intimately, we move into this place where we not just know God, we know who he is. So Jesus' revelation of God to us is obviously the Great Commission. You know, we are, <laughs> it, was, it was what he left with his disciples in every one of the gospels, go and preach the gospel to every person, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and all the Spirit. To make him known becomes obviously one big, very important understand, understanding of knowing God. We understand his mission. It keeps us anchored, focused, uh, moving forward with purpose mm -hmm. in this time. Yeah. So when it's uncertain, part of understanding deeply God is also that he has a mission. Now, many times, obviously, that is the biblical great commission that in, in, involves every one of us here. There's no one that is not included in the idea that we're part of God's mission. But it's also personal. So many times when we talk about knowing God and we invite people to life, right? You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, so we invite people to life, but really it is more than just to life. It's also to purpose. Yeah. He has an assignment for you. I've been for years when we talk about in mission and young people in mission. He has an assignment just for you. That is, even in this time, it might be the workplace. It might be where God has planted you. But certainly he has a plan and a purpose for you. And so many times, so many believers, when I would have conversations with them, that is a point of confusion. What, what, is, what is his assignment for me? But to make him know. Yeah. And all throughout the Old Testament, we see that... God chose his people to know him, but also when you know God, you will make him known. So as we know God, one of the, the outward expressions will, we will make him known. And so when, when Daniel writes the scripture that his people will know him, and they will know his strength, and then they will do great exploits, it is that when we know God, we will, it's not even a choice. It's not, oh yeah, some people are called and some people aren't. No, when we know God, when, you're, when, you're, when we're in covenant with God, when we are bought with the price of Christ and through his death and resurrection and through his life, that we will make him known. It's just who we are because we're his people. So when the Israelites, they, they, were, they knew God and he revealed himself over and over again of who he is. I am God, I am Yahweh, I am the one. I am the I am. It, it was the purpose for their life was to make him known. Amen. Amen. Same for Amen. us today. Amen. 
We know God in this intimate way. Why? So we can make him known to where? Our neighborhood and to all nations. Amen. 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 Sometimes, sometimes that direction, you know, because we, we, we we're wrestling a little bit with the clarity of this, that direction is found in obedience. That, that we know the scripture, we know obviously that we can say, yes, I know that Jesus has a plan or an assignment or a purpose for me, but, you know, we, we, we want to have kind of that direction spelled out somewhere in the vision or a dream or in the prophetic, but that not, that's not really necessarily the direction. It, it is about the intimacy and the communion or the covenant with the Lord that it kind of arises from, but we see, in, and, and here's just one simple sample, but in, in Paul's life in Acts chapter six, 16, I'm paraphrasing the passage, but it's interesting because Paul was obviously clear on the mission. He had this big idea. The gospel is not just for the Jewish people. It was for the Gentiles. So he sets up on a mission. That was his purpose. He was preaching. He was going for the Gentiles. But, but you know, we, we have this story used many times in chapter 16 that we call the Macedonian call. He reveals himself with clarity, direction, and that vision comes to Paul. That did not come in just a vacuum or, in, or he was waiting for that direction. In fact, it says in the verses before the Macedonian call is coming, it speaks to Paul traveling and preaching. One city after another, and one city it says it's closed, and one city the Holy Spirit forbade him. And it looks like in many ways uh, Paul was missing the Lord, or missing at least the direction of the Lord, it seems like, because doors are closed. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not allowing him to go into certain cities. But in the midst of pursuing or in obedience to that unction or knowing the Lord, the gospel for the Gentiles, direction was coming to Paul. I believe this is still true today. And I want to share very quickly, I, I, you know, we, we, we have so many stories and we want to get into sharing also what the Lord is doing. But even personally, you know, uh, many of you maybe don't know me, I'm born a Swede, but you know, if you knew where I'm born and where I'm from, it is like Arctic Circle, 2,000 people, and you drive for hours before you find any There's people. There's more so. reindeer where he lives than people. <laughs> it's okay, true. So, it so, really is true. <laughs> so this is Arctic. This was, you know, and so I, I grew up there, and the Lord obviously did a work in my life, but in many ways, I'm the most unlikely person to set out to do a couple of things that I end up becoming part of later yeah. in life. Yeah. And, 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 and I was you know, very much struggling with this because, you know, it was an insignificant place. It's kind of like what good can come out of Bethlehem. That was very much storeroom <laughs> on the town I'm coming from, if you know the town. So I'm here and the Lord is speaking to me. In fact, I had an unction to go. So I set up to mission and Tanzania became the place, not because I felt called to Tanzania. I was just really, uh, the Swedish Pentecostal church, that was where I was saved. They needed help. I went there. I was serving what we knew as my dad, you know, our families, they all had businesses, trucking and logging and, you know, because there's a lot of trees there. So that's where I was raised in business. And we were, I was good at that. I was a pretty good entrepreneur, but you know, we were set up almost like a city serve in Africa, but it was kind of containers for all the missionaries when communism had collapsed the economy in East Africa. So I'm, I'm there helping. I didn't feel direction. It was just a good place to serve. Coming back from there, I had this, I had this vision. And, and I really felt like, you know, I haven't had many but time, but the Lord really kind of came with clarity to me. Very much a Macedonian called to me. And you heard me mention it many times from Matthew 24 and Revelation 5, 9, 7, 9. But it was really about unrich people. And I felt Jesus said, there's people that never heard my name. Will you give your life? for the cost of unrich people. A lot of uh, Mission 111 and those things are out of that. But I didn't know, I didn't know what that meant. I just knew that this was really the Lord. I saw a vision of a helicopter. It's the very reason I came to you was and met Jennifer. In from Taft, and I'm from Taft. Concord, California. But California. All, of, all of a sudden, we kind of in the obedience to what I didn't understand. I didn't even know how it would work out. We got to be part of some season in Ethiopia that was not about Carl or Jennifer or any other thing, but it was just a season of supernatural harvest that the church just arose and it was a mega harvest. And I'm not even mentioning our city serve and other things we got to be part of. Yeah. But that was completely unlikely, yeah. but based on some kind of obedience to an unction where we were. I didn't feel qualified. And I'm saying this this morning because sometimes you might feel the Lord has something great for you, but you don't feel like you could do it or step into it. Yeah. or know how or if you are worthy or qualified. I'm just saying that the people that know their God. Yeah, yeah. 
when the Lord drops something in your heart and you act on it in obedience, who knows what he will do? Yeah, yeah, amen, amen. amen. So Hallelujah. basically, if you... <laughs> If we, we, I think most of us here has professed Jesus as our personal savior today and that you know him. We, his, he has called us, and you say this often, that he calls us to, for salvation, but he also calls us for a purpose. He draws us in. We are called for a purpose, that God has a purpose for your life, and it's to engage in his mission. And when we know him and we make his name known, and this is what's amazing, that even if you could, I don't even know that we do justice with the unlikelihood, not just of Carl and myself, of, of going and being called into the type of work and exploits, if you will, of what was happening in Ethiopia, coming out of a, a war, coming out of a, a time that it was just starvation. And then we step into, and we're the most unlikely people to build a helicopter base in, in Ethiopia. And when God says, I want you to go and do this, something, and you step out by faith, it's not just Carl and I, it's all of us. When we know God and we make his name known, there is a mission, there is a purpose, and it takes extravagant faith. It takes a faith to say, I'm willing to do what it takes for the kingdom of the gospel to be spread. I'm willing to do what it takes for the name of God to be known and to be expressed throughout the world and for Bakersfield today. When we know God and we make his name known, there has to be this element of faith. And it says in Daniel that it says, you will, they will be people that know my strength or they will be people that are strong. Why are they strong and know the strength? Because they know that all power and authority is given to God and when you step out and you go and you do something and you make God's mission, your mission and purpose, there is an authority that goes with you that will become a great exploit. That it is, a, it is like the mustard seed that turns into this great tree that you cannot cut down. It is when God gets on board with what we do in an action and in a faith, there is going to be a great outcome of expression of an exploit that says only God can do this. Only God can do this. And I believe, church, this is something that we need to, in this day and time, live in that we don't shrink back, that we see that this is a day and time, kind of like Daniel, that we have to defile, we can't defile ourselves. We have to say, I know my one, the one true God. I know Yahweh, but there's a lot of need and there's a lot of brokenness in my community and it's time for me not to shrink back, but for me to move in and make that call my call. And it's going to take faith, it's going to pay, take extravagant giving. It's going to take a faith that sometimes is sacrificial saying, you know what? I'm willing to give all in yeah. order Amen. for the exploit to happen that God wants to do. Amen. So, so doing great exploits, you know. Uh, Sorry, uh, did I go uh, No, it's, it's very good. It's very good. Because we, we, <laughs> he we, shouldn't we, give me a microphone. We love, we love it. We love it. I love this. <laughs> so as we're doing great exploits, and I didn't want to kind of mention that, but I'm, think, I'm, I'm listening to it, and I'm, for the sake of even, because we didn't understand at the yeah. time, but even in Ethiopia, we were just here this year celebrating 25 years of the work we started. We left it to other people, but we celebrated, you know, and, and numbers doesn't matter, but I want to just kind of talk about, and again, it had nothing to do with us, but we were able to celebrate this year 5.2 million recorded decisions to follow Christ, meaning salvation books we gave, people that came forward over the last 20 years. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, so it, that's, that's supernatural. That had nothing to do with, and I could not even imagine it when the vision was there and I was in storeroom. And in fact, even with the helicopter, I didn't yeah. even see the evangelism yeah. or the church planning. And it really was to the credit of the national churches. It was, we just got to be part of something supernatural yeah. in, a, in, a, in an amazing season. But this exploits, who knows what the Lord will do? Yeah. So God inspired ideas and strategies comes when we know him, when we start pursuing him. And we're discussing even this morning here in Canyon, because many times we, we, we put it aside, but think about even here this morning, we have, uh, you know, a lot of leaders, you know, Dave, co-founders, Dave and, and pastor, but right out of Canyon Hills, even before City Serve, now seven, just over seven years ago when the first truckloads came down at Montgomery Ward, uh, in, in fact, it was in November two, uh, 2017. 
So 18, really officially, we kind of launched in the building, but that Montgomery Ward building that was given now uh, several years before, uh, and, 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 and by, by many standards, a bla- big, big black dark hole and lots of vision to start seeing that be put together. But the vision of what would happen if we are Isaiah 58 people, if we would lean into the broken. What if we, even though we as a church are doing this, we say from the neighborhood to the nations, we look at Canyon Hills and the way we serve with Champion Club, the Fort Faith, the many things that we do as Canyon Hills serving the broken, the widow, the orphan, a lot of those things. But what if we would even resource other churches to do the same? And that building is given for that purpose. What if? And that dream that obviously is not just a made-up idea, but God inspired the Holy Spirit, start breeding a vision that who knows what would happen. This is before forming a family or the idea that we will be in Ukraine or North Carolina. This is just seven years ago. So what, what if? I just want to share a video that just uh, over a month ago was happening down here at Montgomery Ward. And I want you to celebrate and start seeing what what great exploits can start to look like even in our life and what has happened right here in our city. Watch that video. Today we are at the City Serve Pod Training and Resource Fair. We have gathered all of our churches in the Kern County area so we can train, equip, and mobilize them to share the love of Jesus deep in the neighborhoods. This is a day filled with equipping in their app training and best use of GIK resources. City Serve's mission is to equip train and mobilize the local church to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ in its community through compassion. And that's what we are here to do for you. Our mission is to equip, train, and resource the local church. They will know us by our love and our kindness. DIK City Serve is one of the greatest humanitarian Jesus-centered resources that we can use to reach people for Jesus. A lot of people are hurting. There's a lot of people that need resources. Ultimately, they need Jesus. And the more you give, the more you bless, the more God's going to provide. We have an opportunity as a church to come along and walk alongside people to make better decisions in our life. That's what this is all about. In the end, it is all about reaching souls. We're able to provide them with job resources to help empower them to find employment. We go out every week with a sign. All of us have signs, and our signs say, We're not hungry, we're not homeless, we're blessed. Stop if you want prayer. We allow the Holy Spirit to use us and be able to help us be able to minister and to speak to an individual. To hear all the stuff that City Serve is doing and and the opportunities that they have to give back, I mean, that's awesome. And so we want to be a part of that. So we're going to fulfill the Great Commission. We're going to go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Being surrounded with a community, resources, partners in any way that's going to be in hope makes a great change when it's not only you but a community of you. The Holy Spirit just said I brought you here to feed my people and give to my people and lo and behold City Serve came and we're able to do just that. Our heart today is really showing the churches how we can resource them. That is what we're called to do. That's what we're here for at City Serve. Our theme is how can we serve you and that's what we're focused on today. Amen. 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 And think about, think about the idea here as we're resourcing. In fact, sometimes there's so many stories we can share, right? Just in our community of churches every day, every couple of minutes out there doing ministry in different places and posting even in our app system. Uh, but also this is transplanted across the country. Yeah. Not just from right here. We as a church said, what if? And start dreaming and the Lord start doing something just supernatural across the country mm-hmm. in so many states. We also discuss things here, you know, lead, leaders. We have so many leaders here, uh, even part of city serving in our church that made this possible. But we are looking at so many crises in the state of California. Another thing that we can share, there's so many stories we could share, but for sure I think this is worth celebrating. We, we can complain about the homeless issues or people that are struggling on the streets, but we were standing in the City Serve building. In fact, me and Don Crabtree here, that's both on the board and has been serving with us, helping kind of pull this through. But we were standing there looking at the parking lot out there uh, with Sergey, and we were discussing, what if, what if instead we would do something 
here on that parking lot. And instead of just kind of complaining about it, what if we could pastor the people and step in and say that maybe God's people can be a solution to the problem instead of just complaining at the problem? Yeah. Right now, the Elevate Departments is almost finished. In fact, the inside, they're almost done. We're just wrapping up on the parking lot and we're building. And this is a supernatural miracle yeah. that has for sure had its twists and turns and taken time. But right now, it is an exploit. And we see the Lord is doing supernatural things that today we think we can even help and inspire other churches to do across the state, in other mm -hmm. cities, other hubs, other affiliates, and maybe eventually across the country. With all the homelessness in, in, our, in our nation, 50% of them live in California. A great percentage of that lives in Kern County. So instead of saying, oh, this is one of these areas that we need to be like Daniel. We need to, be, we have, we need to have the Daniels, that we're not okay with that. that we're, and, but it's going to take faith. It's going to take uh, us understanding who God is and how he works through us. And so we have to step out, be willing to step out by faith because working with the needs, as we know, Whatever the need would be, I've done a lot of social work in, in Ethiopia, but also here in California. Working with it, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of aspects to that. The, and we call that wraparound services. But you know, all these wraparound services that, are, they're going, that people that are off the streets, they can come and they can get the support needed for transformed life. How many know it's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? It's understanding who Jesus is for them that will transform their life. That's the place of the church. Is that just a call for one? No, that's a call for, uh, for all. It's an all hands on deck season that we're living in, that you, your life is significant because you know God and you are called to make him known to the most broken areas of society. And when we do, we will see great exploits like the Elevate Building. We will, it's just the beginning, I believe. Amen. So as we conclude, Daniel 11, 32, you know, when we know God, provides a roadmap in times of uncertainty. We know him. We know his mission deeply. But it begins with knowing him. It's interesting in times like this that that's, that's where it begins. And I know that that is simple. But this morning, even the pastor invited us this morning. Uh, I think that we have an opportunity to be whatever happened this week be people that continue to do great exploits. And the challenge I pray this morning is maybe even for us, for you, as you sit here that the Lord has, maybe this unction, this dream, this idea. You might be in a season, sometimes we're in season, we just feel like we hear God's voice, but dare to step into that and see what the Lord is doing is the most powerful thing. But it all begins with this morning, knowing Him. So if we could stand to our feet. Next couple of minutes, I want to pray. We want to pray two things. I want to ask Jennifer to pray for us if you're here to step out in faith. But before this, if you're here today, I just want to make that call. I know Pastor shared as we did communion. You might be here and you might not have a deep relationship with him. And scripture is clear. It says knowing him, it begins with believing Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. That's what he said. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. But scripture also teaches, Jesus suggested that, you know, if you acknowledge him here, he will acknowledge you in heaven. We have on this upcoming Wednesday, what we call here at Canyon Hills going public. That's what we do with water baptism. It's very important, man. If you made that decision, I encourage you to sign up and say, I want to know him deeply. I want to start journey with him in a different way. That, that, that first Wednesday, that's when we, we baptize people. If that is you here today, but I want to pray with you as we, not just looking around, but you say that, you know what, I want to make that decision, and I want to acknowledge that right here before everybody, because I want him to acknowledge me. It's a different, it's a simple decision. If you're that person today, I want to pray with you. You just lift your hand where you're at. You say, I need, I need someone to pray and agree with faith with me right here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Up there on the balcony, you just lift your hand high and say, you know what? I need to know him deeply. I want to follow him in a different way, just in a new way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. I want us, the whole church will pray with you, but this is kind of just the beginning of a journey, but just kind of saying, you know what? I want everyone to know. I want to follow him and be Daniel in my time, in my world. That's where it begins, great exploits. It doesn't begin with just a big vision or a good idea. Knowing him, they will know their God. And this morning, I, I want you to pray after us all as a church. Just repeat after me as we pray. Jesus, I thank you this morning that you came just for me. I put my faith in you. Today I choose to follow you. I will take my cross daily and follow you because you died on the cross permanently for me to be seated with you. I repent of my sins. I know I belong to you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give everybody a hand. It's the greatest decision. <laughs> You've come into a, a covenant with God that is, is bound. It cannot be broken. Amen. Church, today, do we not see in this, this time that can be a little bit, you know, for me, I don't know what, what it looks like. When I turn on the TV in our, in our um, political situation that's happening, that it could feel a little bit um, uncertain and it could, be, it could create sometimes an anxiety and fear in our life. But if we are truly people of God, it is time that we become like Daniel. And we say, you know what? This is the time in this uncertain time that I can hear from God. And in hearing from God, I will receive direction from Him that will lead me to fulfill a purpose for my life. Some of you have bought into a lie that God does not have a purpose for you, or you're not qualified, or there maybe your sins of the past has disqualified you in some way. There's a lie that's believed there. Today, I believe that the Lord wants to remove those lies in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, no more. That I can say, I think that as a church, we need to say that we're not going to shrink back, that we're gonna move forward and say, God is with me, and if God is with me, who can be against me? When Jesus says go, I, he said, when you go, when you go to your neighbor, when you go to the homelessness, when you go to the orphan, when you go to the girl that's being, that's, that's being trafficked, when you go to your neighbor, my neighbor, Jesus said, go and I will be with you. All power and authority is with you. It belongs to him. It is impossible that it doesn't work. It's impossible that God's name will not be known when we take the place of understanding that it is our call to be the one who proclaims his name. Amen. If you are wanting to go to this place of action, it's a, it's a, it's a life of action. Amen. It's not only for, it, we are a church, we are City Serve, we're doing it all together. It's not just for the pastors or the one that's appointed. It's all of us who says, I want to be the person of action. I want to be like Daniel that says yes to this season, yes to a call, yes to God's purpose, yes for community transformation, yes to say yes to homelessness, yes to serve again, yes to serve in Champions Club, yes to serve whatever I can. I want to be a person of action. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. We have to be that church. We have to be that church. We have to lean into this. Yeah. We have to say, okay, whatever it takes, Lord, I want to step out by faith. And I'm gonna pray for you. And then we're going to have a, just a place for you to know where to go to take that first step. Lord, we say yes to your call. Yes. We say yes, understanding, Lord, that, th that you are the answer for our nation. You are a, the answer for Bakersfield. You are the answer for Kern, Kern, Kern County, Lord. We will do our part and we say yes to take action. We say yes to know you and to make you known. We say yes to your mission, whatever it is. I pray, God, that you would stir up a faith, a hunger, a desire. Lord, that we begin to lean into, Lord, the understanding that you are a God that does great exploits through your, your people and your church. So I pray, God, from this day forward, that this is, we would take on, that this is only the beginning, 
that we're not going to lose, that we're, we're going to win. I pray against any lie that people believe that, that they're not qualified or you don't have a purpose for them or they're insignificant in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that that lie is removed yes. and truth would be established, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that through us saying yes, there will be community transformation. There will be an answer to homelessness. Yeah. There will be an answer, Lord, to, to those that are in need, that are marginalized, God, because we're taking our place. Amen. Let us say yes to you. Yes. Pray for your grace, yes. your goodness. I pray for greater revelation of who you are, what it means to be in covenant with you, Lord, Amen. in this day and time. Amen. 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 Let's worship. Thank you for joining us today at Canyon Hills. We hope the Holy Spirit spoke to you through this message. Our prayer is that your heart was touched and forever changed. God's word is true and life-changing. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to stay up to date on all the things happening here. That way you'll always be in the know when we post new messages, videos from Canyon Hills worship, and when we're live during Sunday and Wednesday services. If you're new to Canyon Hills, we'd love to learn more about you and how we can pray for you and serve you well. You can click the link in the video notes or text NEXT to 661-387-3131 for all the ways to connect at Canyon Hills. We hope you'll have a blessed day and we'll see you next time.